popular misconception concerning filmmaking is that in order for a film to be any good, it must be made by a famous director with a multi-million dollar budget using big name stars and a Hollywood film crew. And that by definition, a low budget film means that it's not very good. Well, all of us have seen at least one of Hollywood's golden turkeys, and I believe that a good film can be made at any level. In September of 1989, I worked with a small film crew making an adaptation of John Steinbeck's short story, The Chrysanthemums. That's me in the red baseball cap. As sound man, I was responsible for recording the audio portions of the film. But since the crew was small and the budget was modest, I also worked as a grip. A grip is another word for hand, as in stage hand, cow hand, or hired hand. Filmmaking requires a lot of equipment. Grips are the crew members who move the stuff around. I would like to move my tripod just marginally to the right here, guys. Oh, fine. Well, it's not nailed down or anything, is it? Yeah. The chrysanthemums was shot with a tobacco or light yellow filter in front of the lens to create a period effect. And since the story takes place mostly outside and in the daytime, there was no need for extensive lighting. But by using reflectors and white cards to manipulate the sunlight, the gaffer, who is a bit camera shy, helped to create subtle lighting effects. This is the way they used to light film in the very early days of filmmaking. The gaffer also shot a lot of the video footage for this story. The prime responsibility of the assistant cameraman was the care of the 16mm Eclair ACL cameras. But he also performed the critical task of focus puller. That is, keeping the image in focus while the camera is moving. The second assistant cameraman kept the production logbook and acted as slate man. Well, she couldn't have known much about chrysanthemums. You can raise them the boom super, operator was like a second pair of ears. Oh, by the way, that fuzzy thing on the end of the oh, pole the he's pole holding is a right windscreen well, designed yes, to can. eliminate wind noise on the microphone. Gas, Have you ever heard the old expression, the camera never lies? Well, let's take a look behind the camera to see if this expression is true and to learn some of the tricks of the filmmaker's art. The tricks begin with makeup. Just about everyone knows that actors, men as well as women, wear makeup. The bright lights used in filmmaking would make an actor look pale and unattractive without makeup. Here, the makeup artist applies makeup to actor Paul Henri. Of course, he must look to the camera as though he's not wearing any makeup. Some actors use the time while being made up to rehearse their lines for the next scene. Do uh, any women ever go to the fights? Oh, uh, what's the matter, Eliza? And then. Do you want to go? Do you want to go? I don't think you'll like it, but I'll take you if you really want to go. I don't think you'd like it, but I'll take you if you really want to go. A moving camera shot is often more interesting to look at than a static camera shot. Filmmakers use a movable platform called a dolly to achieve this effect. The dolly grip must make a smooth camera move without any sudden starts or stops, which would jerk the camera and make the shot distracting and unusable. This is what the camera sees. Besides moving from side to side, the camera can also move up and down. In official filmmaking jargon, this is called a pedestal move, but we call it an uppy-downy. This particular uppy-downy is also a POV, or point-of-view shot, because it represents what the character Eliza sees as she rises up from her digging in the flower bed to see her husband talking to the cattle buyers. The director of the chrysanthemums also co-wrote the film script with the producer and was the cinematographer and editor of the film. I asked him how they plan to interpret the story. We're not trying to interpret it. We're trying to put it there so that the film can be interpreted in the same way that the book was interpreted. Not only in terms of, of, of the philosophical content of the story, but also in terms of act, the actual descriptions of what, going, what is going on in the story. We're trying to stick as close as we possibly can to the story.
Everyone knows that the director is the boss on the set while the film is being made, but what exactly does a producer do? The producer has the responsibility of making sure that all the elements that are needed in front of and behind the camera are there and ready to go on the day of the shoot. These include actors and crew, sets, props, and wardrobe, but also things like lunch for the company, transportation, and payroll. I asked the producer how she kept all these things so organized. But we just know if we do everything on this list today, it's going to be done on the 25th, and the 25th is here, and we are due. To make the film as authentic as possible, actor Paul Henri chose to do his own horseback riding, even though he's never been on a horse before. Wrangler Tootie Hudson gave Paul a quick introduction to basic horsemanship, and after about 20 minutes of instruction, Paul was riding well enough to get this shot. Driving a team of horses with a wagon is a bit more difficult, and in this case, Wrangler Paul Fellingham stood in for actor Mike Halton as the tinker. A dog named Cuddles portrayed the tinker's mongrel mutt, and so actor Mike Halton spent time developing a friendship with Cuddles. This here is my dog, Cuddles. You see, this dog will go no place without me. <laughs> yes. This dog will not act without me. Red was the actual farm dog on the location that we used for the film. He received a Steinbeck t-shirt for his efforts, along with a lot of affection from the cast and crew. Good dog, Red. Since neither of the dogs were professional actors, just how did we get them to do what they needed to do in front of the camera? For this scene, the associate producer hid under a blanket in the back of the wagon and released Cuddles at the appropriate moment to help create this shot. So you would start there and just kind of work down your arm. Oh, it's very exciting. The material is, I couldn't ask for any better material to do. I asked actress Nina Capriola if the chrysanthemums has a feminist message. It's rather a kind of a mysterious you know, sort of story. So people can draw their own conclusions. Filming the actors talking to each other in a moving automobile is a difficult task. We first put the Ford Phaeton on a low car trailer. An outrigger was built to hold the lights. The camera was placed at the end of the trailer to shoot through the windshield. Since it was supposed to be raining at this point in the story, the producer supplied the necessary raindrops with a squirt bottle. A crew member moved a black cutter in front of the lights to create the shadows caused by stationary objects, such as trees on the side of the road. Oh, no, I don't the actual know. film looks like this. I'm sure I don't. It will be enough if we can have one. Well, as you have seen, the camera never does there lie. But there's an awful lot of filmmaker tricks happening just outside the frame to create the illusions necessary to tell the story. And these are just a few of the tricks used in the making of John Steinbeck's The Chrysanthemums. <laughs>